everyone, welcome back to Prime News. A little bit of a different setup. I'm trying to simplify things uh, to just make this more doable instead of taking the usual five hours it takes uh, to put together an episode. And also changing kind of when Prime News is happening, doing more of a end of the day show versus beginning. That does mean sometimes we'll recover stories we already covered in individual videos beforehand, but you know what? That's just what you get. Uh, this time around, however, we actually have five stories I have not yet talked about today. Uh, so let's get into it. Our first one deals with xCloud. That's right. xCloud is coming to a browser near you. Actually, they already have it in uh, beta right now for select individuals who have been invited. Uh, it's currently working on server blades that are intended for use for the Xbox One S. That's right last generation system uh, so the resolution you're seeing in the web browser version right now for those in the beta uh, does not hit 4k although Microsoft has already announced they're working on servers intended to be used with the Xbox Series X to release later this year so should be 4k by the time it becomes like fully public and you're able to actually buy an xCloud subscription uh, it is being bundled into the Xbox app on PC. Uh, not really a, a shocker there. That's kind of how it works on Android as well. Uh, they are going to have a full preview of the web browser version of xCloud available later this spring, just like they have for Android right now. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and obviously the focus on the web version right now is because they're trying to work around restrictions currently on the iPhone. The whole reason there's not a beta on iPhone right now is because iPhone or Apple in this case has told Microsoft, hey, every single game you release on Game Pass, we have to individually approve. Microsoft thinks that's BS. It's showing a lack of trust in their own approval process. And obviously these games aren't being played locally on your phone. They're being played through their service. If it would be like Netflix having to get every single thing released on it approved by Apple, makes no sense. So Microsoft said, nope, we're just going to do this web version and work around uh, your restrictions and just run it through a web browser. So it is what it is. Uh, it's apparently really simplistic right now, but it works pretty much identically to any of the current coverage you have of the Android version of xCloud. So we basically already know how it works. So there it is. Uh, before we get into our next story, though, I want to remind you, we do have a giveaway going on right now for a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card. Head down to the description or the pinned comment to enter. All right, our second story is actually about Sony. So we've got Microsoft out of the way. Now we got Sony because Sony has made arrangements to spend $329 million on second-party games over the next seven years. This was actually buried in their latest financials under the purchase commitments and others section. Uh, this is essentially the amount of money they are spending over the next seven years years on second party exclusive content whether it's for development costs or just straight up publishing the games this is actually notable because we've never actually know how much sony pays for some of their exclusive games and the next final fantasy game included uh so it's very interesting to see this and also you know over 50 percent of the exclusive games that always end up on playstation platforms aren't actually made by studios sony owns they're contracts they pay for so now we know what they're paying over the next seven years now we just need to know what we're getting out of it beyond that final fantasy game all right moving into our third story kind of rapid firing here i hope you guys are enjoying it we have resident evil outrage news so, uh, resident evil outrage actually leaked last year in a capcom data breach so we know the game exists we know the title's real and dusk Gollum has actually been a leaker that has been pretty much right on Everything he says about Capcom, including like Monster Hunter Rise, we knew all about it before it was ever revealed because Dusk Gollum likes to leak things. Now he talks a lot about Resident Evil most of the in most of his leaks, uh, and this time around we actually got a lot of information from him that should get you really excited if you're a Nintendo Switch owner and maybe even uh, other platforms down the line. First off, Resident Evil Outrage is going to be a timed exclusive release planning to release in the fourth quarter of 2021. Now, this is interesting because that's the plan. It could be delayed to 2022, but Nintendo obviously forked up a little bit of money to get some exclusivity, a timed exclusivity for this. What makes this a big deal is because while it does appear that Resident Evil Outrage originally started out development as Resident Evil Revelations 3, which... Again, that makes a lot of sense. Those games have had timed exclusivity on Nintendo platforms before. It turns out that they're dropping the Revelation name and going with Outrage specifically because they don't want this game associated with, 
the kind of side dish story that ends up being the Revelation games. They are known as lesser tier Resident Evil games, or in other words, budget Resident Evil games made in a short amount of time and not much money spent on them. That's not the case this time around. In fact, according to Dusk Island, they have spent at least four years developing this game. And not only have they spent four years doing it, they have put a budget to the game that practically matches Resident Evil Village. That's right, Resident Evil yeah, 8, 7, whatever it's being called, that's being tossed together and just being called Resident Evil Village. Yeah, they're claiming that the budget reaches that level. So they want Outrage to be viewed as basically a top tier Resident Evil game, hence it not wanting to have the Revelations name attached to it. Now, it's going to bring back some of the former cast uh, like other Resident Evil games have done. I believe Rebecca right now is one of the, the characters they're saying is, is going to return. Uh, they also say that uh, it's using RE Engine, but it's using a build of RE Engine built specifically for Switch, and it's the same build that they're using for Monster Hunter Rise, so it's going to end up running and looking great if Monster Hunter Rise is anything to go off of. Now, he does end this by calling it a Code Veronica tier game, which, again, if you go back in Resident Evil history, that was also a top tier game for the Resident Evil franchise. So, again, a lot of great news here about Resident Evil Outrage. A lot of things to be excited about if you are a Switch owner. And then, obviously, it's a timed exclusive. So, like, if you own any platform, I'm guessing it's going there as well, uh, even if it's a year out from the Switch version. Here's something very interesting. A Switch from April of 2016 has been discovered. That's right. Over a year before the official release, we now have what would be, I guess, a preview, a dev unit, whatever the case might be. There was someone in Hong Kong that got their hands on it. It was purchased. It's now in the United States. The firmware on it is from April of 2016. It has been fully dumped and backed up, and the actual Switch unit itself was sent off to somebody for safekeeping. However, we do have like one image showing a couple of design differences with like the volume button rocker having some different symbols and different screws. Otherwise, it appears to look mostly like another Switch. We don't have any new information to glean from this right now but it will be interesting to see what did the switch look like a year before launch for developers uh obviously the final form was pretty much set in stone but you know did it have different hardware in it uh were there different hardware settings Were there higher boost clocks uh was there other things in that in that firmware that maybe just never made it in the final version these are things we're going to probably find out by the end of the week if we're honest uh but for right now it's kind of exciting to get a rare look at what a system looked like a year before it actually released. So I think that in itself is really, really cool. Now, before we get into our final story, folks, I am very thankful that you guys are watching this video. And if you made it this far, drop a like and why not subscribe, right? I mean, you're obviously enjoying the content and enjoying all the news I have brought to you. If we could hit 62,000 subscribers before the end of this month, I'm going to do a special giveaway in the month of March. Uh, so let's get there together. We're already really close to 63.1 thousand. I think like five subscribers away at the time of recording. So let's just keep this going. Let's keep the positive vibes going here in 2021 and get into our final story. And that is Super Mario 3. 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury sales. We have our first sales data in, and it looks like Super Mario 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury is crushing it. That's right, folks. We have the UK sales in. For once, it's not Japan sales we got first. It's UK, and oh boy, does it look great. So for starters, it sold three times better than the original release did on Wii U during its launch week. Not a shocker, because nobody owned a Wii U. So what does that mean? What's you know, three times nothing. It's still nothing, right? Well, not exactly here. It's actually the third best-selling Mario game on Switch for launch week, behind Odyssey and Super Mario 3D All-Stars. But you think about all the other Mario games from Super Mario Maker 2, Super Mario Party, you start thinking about all the other Mario games that exist, you start to be like, this is the third, like, quickest-selling one? That is notable. In addition, it was number one for the overall week. We don't have the full chart out. We just have the initial report that it was number one for the week. We'll see how long it stays at number one. Most games launch at number one, then fall off a little bit. So we'll see how, where it ends up in week two, three, and four, and before we get Japan sales in and anything else. But this is looking to be an excellent start for Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. And whew, 
That's some great news, honestly, if you know you are hoping for this game to be successful. I think Bowser's Fury is some of the most significant content they have added to a Wii U port yet, uh, so I'm glad to see it doing well, and in my opinion, it's worth buying if you, even if you've only, even if you 100%ed 3D World back on Wii U as I did. I think Bowser's Fury mode, I'm not going to say it's worth 60 bucks, but considering that it's supposed to be a side dish, if you wanted to re-experience 3D World, or you haven't experienced 3D World before, absolutely, like, get this game. It's worth it. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for tuning into this new version of Prime News. Whew! I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. I got to get to editing this, like, right now. I'm kind of on a tight schedule. I got some college work to get to. Kids just went to bed. Let's just keep it fresh, keep it real. I'm not going to dance myself out of here. I'm just going to vanish. <laughs>